electric heating film for glass. Electric current is passing through the conductive thin film with two electrodes attached. There are four pieces of the film and there are intermediate electrodes to pass electric current from one piece of the film to another piece of the film. The film sheet resistance is 12.6 ohms per square. Film thickness is 170 nanometers. The film is normally attached to the glass, but it's not important now. The voltage source is 220 volts. The task is to calculate the current value and to calculate the joule heat power density distribution in the film. I'm going to use quick field simulation software to conduct the virtual experiment. In general case, you will need three-dimensional analysis, and it is possible to run three-dimensional analysis in quick field, but I'm going to use a trick to simplify the geometry model. You see the electrode thickness is different from the film thickness. The electrode thickness is 2 micrometers and the film thickness is 170 nanometers. I'm going to replace thick electrodes from with thin electrodes of the same thickness as the film. And to compensate for the reduced cross-section, I'm going to increase the electrical conductivity of the electrodes. So the electrodes will feature the same thin electrodes will feature the same resistance as the thick electrodes. And this way I will be able to run two dimensional analysis. Okay, let's start quick field now. In quick field I create new problem. Glass. Next. Problem type is DC conduction. The conducting film is very thin. So the model class is plane parallel and the film thickness is 0.17 microns. But I'd better switch the length in each to millimeters. Okay, finish. On the left you can see the problem pane and on the right is the geometry model editor window. You should draw the geometry model here or you can import the geometry model from the Dijkstra file. I already have the geometry model prepared in the CAD system. Here is the file and I will import it. Here you can recognize the film and the electrodes. Let's assign labels. Through labels we can distinguish objects from one another and provide material properties. Switch to select objects mode, click the object to select and type in the label name here. This block is film. And this block and this and this one are film. Hold the control button press to select multiple objects at the same time. Now let's zoom in. Switch to select mode. This is the electrode. And this one and this one. Electrode. And this is the electrode. And this is the electrode. And this is the electrode. And the last section. These are electrodes. And this one uh -huh, is the electrode. OK. Now I should assign labels to the terminals. We have grounded terminal here. So for these edges, edges I will assign a label 0. And for these edges, I will assign label voltage. Now let's provide physical properties for these labels. For the film, resistance is 
12.6 ohms per square. We need to convert this to the volume unit, so I multiply this value by the film thickness. 12.6 multiplied by the 0 0.17 micrometers, so times 10 to the power of minus 6. This is the resistivity. In quick field, you should specify the recyclical value, the conductivity, and the recyclical value is this one, 466,000. Copy this and paste it here. OK. The electrodes are made of copper with the conductivity of 56 mega siemens per meter. And remember, we have replaced thick electrodes with thin electrodes. Thick electrodes thickness is 2 micrometers, and the thin electrode thickness is 0 0.17 micrometers. So I'm going to attenuate the conductivity value and multiply it by the ratio of 2 to 0 0.17. So the conductivity of copper is 56 mega siemens per meter multiplied by 2 divided by 0 0.17. This is the conductivity. Paste it here. OK. Now the grounded electrode has zero electric potential, and the other electrode electric potential is 220 volts. OK. Before I can run the analysis, I should build the finitely made mesh. Just press this button, and the mesh will be generated. Oh, it's rather dense mesh, 3.7 millions. Let's help quick field and adjust the mesh density manually. Edit, select all, and specify the spacing value, 2 millimeters. OK, now the mesh size is only 400,000 nodes. Save all problem files and solve the problem. Let's take a look at the results. Here you can see the current density distribution. You can adjust the field picture and see the electric potential distribution and switch on the vectors. So the current flows in this direction, then it flows in the electrode and in this direction in the field, again in the electrode, and to the left in the field, in the electrode, and to the right, to the grounded electrode. You can use the contour tool, click to select, let's switch off the color map. Here you see, I have selected the first section of the film. And for this section, I can calculate the cross-section area and the joule heat power in the volume. Let's change the limit to meters. So I can copy and paste it here. And for the first section, we have power divided by the area which is, again, copy this, paste it here, 510 watts per meter squared. Now, what about the second section? Click to select the second section, click to unselect the first section. This is the power, this is the area. So for the second section, we have the power density of 514 watts per meter squared. What about the third section? This is the power. This is the area. 516 watts per meter squared. And the fourth section. This is the power, this is the area. 
515 watts per meter squared. So we have more or less equal power dissipation in each section. What else you can do in Griffield? You can measure the current. Contour, remove contour. To measure the current, you should draw the contour and cross all the current paths. Let me show you. I have crossed all the current paths. And the current value is 3.2 amperes. This is the current. And the voltage is 220 volts. Now, if I multiply the current by the voltage, I will get the total power. This is the total power produced by the film heater. Let's compare this value to the total power dissipated by the film. First section power plus second section power plus third section power plus fourth section power. What will be the value, I wonder? 698 watts. And the difference between this value and this value, about 10 watts, is dissipated in the electrodes. Let's take a look. I will switch off vectors, switch off the equipotential lines, switch on the color map, and choose the displayed value to be joule heat. Now you see that in fact the joule heat distribution is not uniform. We have hot spots here and here and here in the corners. And the cold spots where the current density is low. So now I believe you have all the data required to run thermal analysis and calculate the temperature of the glass. It is used for the electric heating film. Or glass. On our website, you will find the example page. Here you can read about problem setup, browse the solution section, take a look at the result pictures, and download the simulation files. Simulation files may be opened and the results may be viewed using any Quickfield edition, including Quickfield Student Edition, that you can download from our website for free.